Hi, welcome to the Sankofa Pan African series. Our guest today is Bridget Edu, a Ghanaian born London based business strategist, startup consultant, and entrepreneur. Her background covers years of experience in creative marketing and branding, as well as startup consulting in fashion, beauty, and lifestyle, lifestyle startups across Europe, Africa, Asia, as well as the Middle East. Um, just before we meet Bridget uh, um, Edu, who will be telling us about her exciting work, let re me remind you that we can only continue this series if you support us. So please click on your subscription button if you've not yet done so. Also, don't forget to click uh, the bell, your notification bell, so that we can let you know when we have new episodes. Welcome, Bridget. Me. <laughs> um, please tell us a bit more about your background. How did you get to be in this exciting industry? Well, um, so I, I live in London. Um, I live and work in London, but I'm Ghanaian by birth. My parents are Ghanaian. Um, I came here at the age of six. And um, I've probably been to Ghana about four times in the last, I say, 30 something years. But I'm, I'm an entrepreneur at heart. And I started my first business when I was around about 18, which was a beauty business. And then from then, I just I've cultivated the love for creating and serving. So I've always been an entrepreneur at heart. Um, and between me starting my first business at 18 and having my children, I had about three beauty businesses. But in 2011, um, I had a cosmetic um, concession in a London supermarket or London, sorry, London department store. Um, and one thing that caught my eye whilst I was doing my research um, on products, because I was going into product development at that time as well, was how we were lacking behind within the African industries in the diaspora in terms of um, positioning, placement, packaging, display, all those kind of things. So within about two years from me taking note of those things, I started consulting um, with a lot of African brands. In fact, I started a PR company back in 2011 um, and most of my clients were African. Um, and just like myself, most of them came from African homes where they had very little support um, with their businesses, both financially and just kind of like, you know, they weren't championed by their family or friends. They found themselves not knowing exactly how to network, where to go, um, to really refine the process and get their products out there. So it just, it, it lit up this desire within me to start something. Um, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to start, but I knew what I wanted to do was bring to the mainstream a kind of a fine tuning um, of both the African products, the culturally inspired product, um, and also just the culture. Okay. That's what I really wanted to do. Yes, yeah, so that's how that's how I got into Anglo Nubia. You really are a natural born entrepreneur because. Um, <laughs> so, but when you said you started with beauty business, what do you mean? Uh, what kind of beauty? Be because jumping okay. from maybe someone who sells beauty product to PR, it's such a huge jump. It is. It so really what is. Said, what, so, what beauty business were you in? Okay, so I started, my first business was a, a beauty salon and a makeup studio, a makeup oh, artistry wow. studio. Yes, I actually studied um, cosmetology at the then Dark and Lovely College in Ghana. Okay. Um, which, yeah, which no longer exists. They had a beauty school there. Um, and I think I was one of the last batch of students before they shut down back the academy. To, you went back to Ghana to study? I did, I did yeah. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I went to study hair and beauty um, against my parents' wishes. My father wanted me to study law. So um, I did my polytechnic, did a diploma in business studies. And then my then husband, my husband, who was my boyfriend then, um, he gave me a small investment, once again, against my parents' wishes. And I went to study. And when I finished, I opened up my own practice. Um, but it, my my love for products kind of 
went into natural products like shea butters and you know when I had the salon open customers would come looking for solutions I would turn to natural products mm-hmm. so I started formulating um, like shea butters and oils and things like that and then when I came back to the UK um, my knowledge of those things kind of op- helped me to consult with other people who wanted to create so going from working in beauty um, from having a salon into really loving natural products then that kind of led into African fashion my my, my mother actually is um is a a designer so I do come from a very eclectic kind of a home where we're all creatives yes my mother is a designer she worked for um john lewis and selfridge and some of these big oh, wow yeah companies. top shops big shops yes. in the UK. back in the day when yeah. we still had um we still had factories in london she used to have contracts and i used to help her when i was little so even though i'm not kind of a hands-on person with fabrics and clothing I'm more of a beauty person. I had that foundation and that desire and love for all things fashion and clothing. Mm. You also mentioned something that I think uh, is quite significant, that you noticed that we were lagging behind. Um, Can you elaborate more on, you know, on that? Because you're just one person, you know, working there. I'm sure there, there, there must be other areas, um, other people who are not even aware, yeah. you know, or have the kind of keen eyes that you that made you quickly see that there was yeah. something. So what was missing? When you said you were I, I think w- when I started to do a lot of, I love research and I'm not the kind of person just to say, okay, I'm going to go into business and I'm going to sell product ABC I really love to go into what's available in terms of wholesale and production so in that journey of me opening up my own concessions and selling beauty products I was going through a lot of high street retail stores looking for um, brands and then trying to find out where I can find the wholesalers behind those brands so I could buy maybe leftover stock Um, And it just kind of occurred to me that there's nothing in the UK high street in terms of African beauty products. There was was nothing. I couldn't find any. Um, And when I did go online, I was coming up with very, dare I say, mediocre images and websites. And um, just I was looking at what was, you know, photography and how things were presented on websites. And when I did found the odd, you know, back in 10 years ago, the odd product that was African inspired, it just didn't really measure up. And mm-hmm. it got me thinking, why was that the case? So what are the moves that you have now made to rectify, to remedy that situation? Okay. In yeah. terms of maybe, you might even, if you want to refer to some of the portfolios you've handled and yes. what you've done with them. Yeah. So from that space or that place of kind of realizing that there wasn't much out there, I started, so I came up with an idea to create a multi-level platform. Um, And that multi-level platform would look like an end-to-end PR marketing branding service for African brands. That was the gap that I I realized existed when I was consulting with my clients. Um, So I launched Anglo Nubia. We launched it as an event in London. And when we did our marketing, we had brands flying into the UK from Ghana, Nigeria, Tanzania, Kenya. So we created an an end-to-end process where the brands came, did a fashion show, and at the end of the fashion show, they had a 12-month support for their brand. Some of the brands went on to get um, funding from banks in Africa because of the event we did. But then that also led, obviously, word got out about my services. I had mainstream clients coming in as well. So that gave me the opportunity to separate the African-inspired platform from the mainstream platforms and then I created a PR agency out of that so even though we have had a quite few years with the Anglo Nubia platform which is the African inspired marketing and PR platform um, I've been able to create a you know a global portfolio for myself working with shoe brands cosmetic brands clothing brands from India Australia so I do have a bit of a portfolio around a lot of mainstream brands more than the African inspired brands, but it, it feels like this year is a year of return somehow for that project. 
So does that mean your African brands are now suffering? <laughs> well, I think, no, I, do you know, I think that the year where I launched was the year that a lot was happening. African Fashion Week for London, for example, launched in, on the same day that I launched my project. Was and I deliberate? Did you? It was not. It wasn't at like... all. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't actually. Um, my event was in October of 2012. And I think African Fashion Week London was in the same, something happened and they kind of had their event on the same day as myself. So within that year, 2012, I think there was just this uprising of a lot of people starting to take initiative um, and seeing that there was a gap in the market. Um, and for me, that particular platform, I think maybe was a little bit ahead of its time in what I wanted to do. Um, I was a little frustrated because I just wasn't able to get my message across to the community. Um, you know, because I think culturally, Africans love, um, we love show, we love pageantry, we love to see beautiful things and experience food and music. And a lot of people who were open up platforms like fashion shows, they were offering that where I was very much business minded, as in having food and music and dance at an event doesn't help anyone build a business. And that was the mind in which I went into this. And I think it caused a little bit of friction um, within some communities. So I had to take a little step back <laughs> and just kind of feel it out and wait and just kind of like, when will be the right time to launch this? Hmm. So what, so well, having been in this industry and having made the kind of um, inroads that you have, um, in a nutshell, if you were say, asked to advise, you know, um, Africans and African diaspora, uh, people of African uh, diaspora who are into beauty, clothing, all those kind of industry. How would you advise them? Because honestly, there are a lot of people in that industry. But you're right; it's not uh, generally it's not being conducted as uh, to be as a, um, as profitable. As, mm -hmm. as it should be. And they're, they're not as big, you know. Uh, there are brands out there that could actually blow up with yes. the right kind of, you know, the right kind of advice, the right kind of know-how. So yeah. what kind of, what advice would you give to people who are in that industry and who are looking to grow big? Yeah. Um, thing I would say is that a lot of designers or startup businesses need to realize that Africa's, Africa, the continent, and the way we conduct business is very different from in the diaspora. Um, the systems are very, very different. The processes are very different. And people need to get educated. And they need to realize that it does take time to build a business. We don't have the market system like we do in Africa, where everything's very open. In the diaspora, everything's very closed. You have to go through gatekeepers and um, you have to understand who buyers are and what investors are looking for. You have to be willing to present your product in the best possible light. And that takes time. So for people who want to start a business and let's say get investment or have their products placed in a department store, they need to do their research. And they also need to be open to, you know, being criticized and having direction, you know, not just kind of, you know, we have a lot of seamstresses and our people are very, very talented. But people need to have the mindset of, I need to move away from just sewing a product or two into researching, understanding how a business can succeed and then following that route. And in terms of PR, yeah. um, what, can, what, what can they do? I mean, PR is, is, is the lifeblood of success, business success. It is the, it, without it, your business will die. If you have an amazing piece of jewellery and you hide, hide it under your bed, no one's going to know it's there. So you need to be willing. We live in a global village and, you know, we're all very much connected through technology. So if you have a product, you need to be able to put a lot of effort into talking about that product. Yeah. It doesn't mean you have to be online all the time, but you have to find a way to be consistent in your communication with your target audience um, and the market you want to reach. You need to find that market and you need to be consistent and tell a story and create a sense of community around your brand. So PR is, is foundational for business success. It's very important. 
So, so currently you're focusing on um, Anglo Nubia. Yes. Um, as a PR. So tell us more what, what okay. the of Anglo Nubia is. Yeah, sure. So Anglo Nubia is I I've, I've termed it as, as a multi-level um, platform for promoting African and African-inspired brands. The aim is to bring um, a fine tuning of palettes to what the culture has to offer. So it is a PR tool, it's a marketing tool. What we plan to do is we're creating a hub. Um, the hub is in two sections. We have an incubator space for the brands who just, people who just don't know what to do with themselves in terms of have, a beat, have an idea. I don't know anything from Adam about business. We have the incubator program, which is when we launch, it will be a, a year where you can come in, be mentored, learn the basics of SEO, digital marketing, branding, copywriting. And then we have the Global Connect, which is a kind of um, ready to market space where we connect people with buyers, investors, stylists, um, press and media. So it is it's a PR tool, it's a marketing space. Um, it's just a, a massive hub where whether you're ready or not, you can come in and you can get something for yourself and connect with the world. So, but then, um, do you only work on uh, beauty and fashion related products, uh, brands? For now, it's fashion, beauty and lifestyle. So interiors, um, service providers. Um, so, you know, musicians, anyone who has as long as the product and service is culturally inspired yeah then then yeah you're welcome on board oh awesome awesome so there are people out there who have brands that they think uh, uh would want to work with you um how can they reach out to you um they can visit um anglonubia.com and they can send us an email through the website okay any other interesting thing uh, that we can be looking out for uh, from you in the near future? <laughs> yes, yes, I'm. Yeah, I'm very passionate about Africa, and um, I'm. We're working behind the scenes to create a small search engine, um, which kind of has the features a bit like Google. And one of the problems is that a lot of people have beautiful products and beautiful websites and beautiful brands but they're not being found. So we're working on a little project which will be attached to Anglo Nubia, which will be like a search engine that will help you gain visibility. Thank you very much for, for sharing your, your, your work with us. And uh, we, we look forward to having more talks with you as uh, Anglo Nubia continues to grow. Look forward to that. Thank you. Thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe to the Sankofa Pan-African series channel, like our videos, and please share them with your contacts.